we think semiconductors is at the has always been in a structural growth trend, but it's ultimately about to inflect um, in a more serious way. Um, and so what we're talking about here is, is ultimately semiconductor demand has been growing in a fairly linear fashion for a long period of time. Um, but you've got a couple of things coming together now all at the same time, which suggests that it could start to grow exponentially. Um, and the first is 5G technology. So 5G technology will ultimately mean everything in the world will get connected. Um, and so you'll connect your traffic lights, you'll connect your car park, you'll connect your fridge, you'll connect your front door. And all of this is going to create a whole bunch of data. And that extra data, so you're going to get exponential more amounts of data created in the world because of 5G technology. Uh, that data will then go up to the cloud where it will be processed through artificial intelligence, which is the second big trend that's coming to the market. Uh, and artificial intelligence will be able to process that in the cloud. So you're going to need a lot of semiconductor, you're going to need a lot of compute power for that also. And, and the last big trend is, you know, we have the two major super trend, superpowers in the world effectively going to war over technology. Um, being China and the US and most of the biggest companies in the world going to war over AI. Um, and so the solution to this is just to throw lots of silicon at it, lots of semiconductors. Uh, we call this the coming sandstorm that's coming. And so from our point of view, semiconductor companies are effectively the weapons manufacturers in this war. Um, and what's interesting about the semiconductor companies is, is this is happening at a time where there's fewer and fewer of them. So the commodity nature of the business has sort of gone away and there's now just a couple of players that dominate each vertical. When we look at these semiconductor companies and the weapons manufacturers in the war, if you look at some of these verticals, and I'll give you an example around lithography. Uh, so lithography is, is like the stencil that you would put on a road if you were putting a crossing or, or like a stencil you might have done in arts class. Lithography is your ability to draw the chip design onto the chip. Uh, and as the chips get smaller and smaller and as they get more and more transistors on them, it gets harder and harder to do. Uh, and if we look at ASML in Holland, we, we like to call it the most important company in the world that no one's ever heard of. Um, it's basically now a monopoly in, in high-end lithography. There is, there's no other company in the world that can compete with them to enable the shrink to continue in semiconductors or allow Moore's Law to continue. And so, so they have a technology called EUV technology. Most people haven't heard about it, uh, but it's a machine that allows Moore's Law to extend and they sell one of these machines literally for 130 million euros. Uh, that's more than two 737s. Um, and so ASML is now a monopoly selling equipment of very high gross margins and it will sell them for a very long period of time because of its ability to extend Moore's Law. Um, so that's one example. The second example would actually be in foundry. So most semiconductors are actually made by third party suppliers. Um, the biggest one in the world is TSMC. Uh, they now have nearly a 50% market share in high-end lithography, i.e. The, the very small or very advanced chips. And so ultimately, if you're AMD or if you're NVIDIA and you want to get a chip made, you have to go to TSMC. So they're now also a virtual monopoly. Um, and the last one we'd talk about is memory. So memory is the biggest commodity in, 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 in semiconductors in the world, and it basically goes in your phones and all your computers. We're literally down to three companies in the world that can actually produce memory, uh, being Micron, Hynix and Samsung. So that's effectively an oligopoly. Um, so at the same time that all this demand is appearing, you also have this situation where the, the com competitive environment is weakening, uh, which is going to create a really good opportunity for these companies in the years ahead.